Hey everybody, Tony D with another hot take, this time about Trump's critics. Now, I'm not talking about the people with TDS. People with TDS, uh, they are technically Trump critics, but they're more like Trump, anti-Trump zealots, I would call them. <laughs> when I'm talking about the critics, I'm talking about people who actually can discuss Trump reasonably, and they have reasonable arguments. So the reasonable argument now is as they're looking at the Tulsa rally and uh, they're not seeing the overflow that Trump sort of promised, um, that they're saying, aha, see, people aren't supporting him as much, and Trump isn't stopping these statues and this Chaz place and all this stuff. There's all kinds of craziness going on. Why is Trump doing something? Well, the answer is pretty simple. I mean, as in terms of the rally, uh, rally's way more attended than anything Biden's ever done. So, you know, he had like a million people sign up. If he gets half a, half that, a quarter of that, it's still hundreds of thousands of people. I mean, it's still a very big rally. So, um, I wouldn't count Trump out. Now, the other reason that the numbers were a little low, of course, there was a lot of scaremongering about the beer virus. And of course, the idiots from BLM Antifa showed up. And I call them BLM Antifa because that's what BLM Antifa is calling itself. So if it's not BLM Antifa, if it's only Black Lives Matter, when are you going to separate the Antifa part? Better get on that. I'm warning you, it's going to ruin your movement. It kind of already has. But, um, but these critics have a valid complaint. Why isn't Trump doing this? Why isn't Trump stopping these statues? In case you haven't been keeping score, we started with the Confederates. Uh, then we went to Jefferson and Washington getting torn down. Something Trump himself called out back in, I think, 2017. It'll start with the Confederates, and then we'll get Jefferson and Washington. And they said, oh, Trump is crazy. And no one's talking about Jefferson and Washington. Can't bet against Trump. Never bet against Trump. I told you. Guys called a lot of things. Um, so yeah, uh, Jefferson and Washington statues, uh, the most recent ones, Ulysses S. Grant, um, the man who defeated the Confederacy, and uh, some saint, I forget his name, um, and Cervantes, the greatest Spanish writer in history. Uh, Cervantes also was a slave himself for five years, captured by Barbary pirates until he was ransomed back to Madrid. So his statue wasn't torn down. It was defaced. They spray painted a bunch of stuff. I'm pretty sure these woke idiots don't even know who he is. I'm pretty sure they don't know who Ulysses S. Grant was. They just saw a statue and went, oh, let's tear that down. Um, it's just become a trend. These woke idiots are caught up in the trend and they love it. They love causing destruction and no one's stopping them. So, you know, this is more of a state level, city level thing. These are public works. They, if you're going to have public property, you have to protect it. You have to. And Trump is not doing anything cause kind of not his responsibility. Number one. Understand that the federal government's responsibility, and the president specifically, is for national security. This is internal security. He's really not supposed to get involved in that unless it gets really out of hand. I mean, I think it's a, it's a game of call your bluff, right? The Democrats are saying, ah, we're going to make a lot of trouble for you, Trump. You got you to gotta blink. You got to, you know, activate the Insurrection Act. Come on. Come on, oh, oh, is another statue going down? Come on, come on. Trump is not taking the bait. So this is what's going to get him reelected. I mean, he's got so much material. I mean, even if it's not Biden running on the ticket, even if it ends up being Hillary or s somebody else as he just bows out, how could anybody defend these actions? How are you going to, how are you going to defend a Trump commercial where Antifa tears down George Washington, tears, I mean, there's all this footage of them tearing down statues, Ulysses S. Grant. How are you going to defend that, Democrats? You're tied into that.
because of BLM. Antifa, BLM, Democrats. Because the BLM movement is funneling all their money into Act Blue, which you control. There'll be no defense of this. And I think it's just too early to start wailing on the Democrats for this. It's just really too early. This is uh, June. You're going to start campaigning in June? Too early. I mean, yeah, Trump's going to do rallies. I mean, he's just getting them geared back up. Really, these are just practice rallies at this point. It's not going to get geared up until August, maybe. I mean, the Dems haven't even officially anointed Biden. It still could be someone else. It still could be Hillary. I mean, H.A. Goodman is calling Hillary. I mean, who knows? Biden could, I'm not wishing this upon him, but he could die. He could just die. Or he could just step aside. I mean, he's kind of in rough shape. So until they pick a candidate, there's no one for Trump to really go after. And, you know, he's offered help. And the Democrats refuse to take it. So... What's that tell you? It's not Trump's fault. If he offers the help and the Democrats say, no, we're fine, <laughs> things just get worse and worse and worse, it doesn't make Trump look bad. It makes them look bad. Everybody in Seattle who wants the Chaz torn down, and I'm sure most of the people living in it who lived there before the Chaz would love to see it taken back, um, you know, they're all becoming Republicans. <laughs> They're certainly not going to vote for Biden or a Democrat that condones this stuff. Not the mayor. Uh, when you got Trump tweeting day and night, hey, I'll, I'll send the National Guard in. We'll take care of it. It'll all be back in your hands and everything. All, the cops will be fine. You'll be fine. They're not doing it. That's not Trump's fault. He is a national borders guy. He's not there to control your city. That's your problem, city people. And they have the power to fix it. I mean, even the mayor of Seattle could send in the SPD and say, take it back, shut it down, take back the police station, clean the streets. I mean, she could do it. She doesn't want to. She doesn't want to because she's trying to play the national stage. Because the Democrats are so weak. There's so nobody in their, their bench. You know, even, some, even a mayor from Seattle could run for president next time around. Why not? If she gets enough of the national spotlight, I'm sure she has ambition. All politicians do. So, uh, Biden's going to be out. Hillary will be even older. Elizabeth Warren isn't no spring chicken. Uh, Amy Klobuchar... Kamala Harris and the other guys, well, they already kind of lost. And it's going to be like, there was like a million people on stage before. These guys have national attention. I'll tell you who's definitely going to run. The governor of Mich Michigan. Uh, Whitmer? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I think she's, you know, sort of vying for VP. But no, she's definitely going to run for president in the future. Oh, my God. She can't wait. I can see it written all over her face. So Trump is just, he's playing his hand. And this is the way you play this hand. Now it sucks. It sucks for the people who have to put up with this. It sucks for the people who, uh, you know, see their statues and parks torn apart by these people. It sucks for the cops, certainly. Although I don't, you know, I have mixed feelings about the cops in this, uh, uh, on this point. Because here's the thing. Cops for years... And not all cops, just a, a select bunch. But you know, you know they get protected. You know there are guys on the force who do stuff. I've heard the stories a million times from guys in in who are cops. And cops love the joke about the stuff they do. And I'm not talking like murders. I'm talking like stuff they're not supposed to do that they do all the friggin' time. Because they can get away with it. There's no punishment until they do something so egregious politically, they have to be punished. That's when the cops get punished. And it's not a racial thing. It's a, well, it's a system thing, I guess you'd say. We have given the cops too much power. If you take that power back, 
you probably need to get completely get rid of police unions and you could make it work. Um, you know, some people are saying, well, defund the police. Well, they did that in Camden and that's what we mean. No, there was a New York Times op-ed that said quite clearly, no, we don't mean defund the police as in transform it. We mean to actually abolish it. They want to send social workers instead of cops. And there's some merit to that system to have social workers to take care of certain calls, just certain ones. But you're talking more tax money, you're talking more people on the street, and you're talking there's going to be an incident where a social worker goes, but it should have been a cop, and they're going to get their face blown off by some maniac. Some mentally ill lunatic is going to blow their face off. Then what are you going to do? You're going to say, well, we need more cops. I mean, it's all reactionary bullshit. So uh, what Trump is doing is he's setting the stage to win. And once he wins again, he's probably going to not only have the Senate, the House, he'll probably have almost every governorship. And they've been turning red for a while. We're down to a handful of governors uh, who are Democrats, they're going to go by the wayside. As well they should. The Democratic Party deserves to lose every election <laughs> at this point. They really do. They just deserve to be wiped out at this point because we need a new party. You need something new to take its place. Not Black Lives Matter, although it seems to be vying as a political party. Uh, I wouldn't pick that. But something new. Something new that could actually work. I suggest the Libertarians, they could be the new sort of counterbalance. Um, but I know a lot of you don't agree with that, but whatever. So uh, this is what Trump is going to do. The plan is you win and then you take care of it after the win. Because after that, he gets the house back and he picks up some more governorships. And he's just going to clean house. What are these Democrats, what are the handful of Democrats going to do at that point? You're completely out of power. You've got, you don't even have the House anymore. What are you going to beat Trump over the head with now? He beat you even when you had the House. And now he's beating you again. He's going to rebuild the economy back. Look, Trump is not stupid. He knows how to play this game. It's a waiting game. Yeah, everybody's panicking on Twitter. Uh, server, uh, Cernovich, I think his name is, journalist. He's criticizing Trump day and night. Yeah, you can criticize him all you want. Yeah, right now. Uh, give it another two months, I say. Another two months, that's when the race really starts. When they pick their candidate, that's when it starts. Meanwhile, Trump is like pouring money uh, into bridges and infrastructure. He was tweeting about it the other day. I couldn't believe how much money he was spending. It's all over all these programs, building, 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 all this construction. Well, it's almost like his little New Deal program. I don't think that's going to work economically. It kind of can't work, but people seem to like it when FDR does it. So why won't the people like it when Trump does it? Eh, they're going to they're gonna turn the tide on Trump at some point. And uh, uh, again... Look to the UK. Look at what happened to the Labour Party. The same thing was happening in the UK. And look what happened. Now the Tories run everything over there. They're running it poorly. I don't think Trump is going to run it like they are. I don't think Trump is going to half-ass his win. I think he's just going to step on the gas even more when he wins. And a lot of people are looking forward to that. So, uh, count... Count your days, Democrats, BLM, and Antifa. I can't, I can barely tell the difference between the three of you anymore. Um, because Trump is playing you, and you're falling right into his hands.